Hey everyone, I'm Danny, and welcome to Muggle Magic. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to Grindelwald yourself. And by that, I just mean um, changing a photo of yourself that looks something like this into this. So uh, basically we're going to change your eye color on one of your eyes to be a pale blue and we're going to add a mustache, we're going to make your skin pale, and we're just going to mess with some of the colors, adjust, adjust some of the colors in here to make it look a little cooler. I originally did this for the thumbnail of my review of the Crimes of Grindelwald and discussion video. So uh, yeah, this is actually from that thumbnail. So I'm just going to recreate this in this video. But first, let's talk about Skillshare, because this video was brought to you by Skillshare. And Skillshare is an online learning community for creators uh, with more than 25,000 classes in design, business, and pretty much anything you could think of, you're gonna find classes on Skillshare. A premium membership gives you unlimited access so you can join the classes and communities that are right for you. Whether you wanna fuel your curiosity, creativity, or even your career, Skillshare is the perfect place to keep you learning and thriving. And actually, Skillshare has a course on Photoshop, a beginner course, The Fundamentals of Photoshop. And I definitely recommend that you check this out. It's a five class series. It was a collaboration between Adobe and Skillshare. And you're gonna learn everything you need to know there to get started with Photoshop. So if you're a beginner and you just don't know where to start, definitely check this out. Skillshare is super affordable. Uh, an annual subscription is less than $10 a month. And that's really good. Uh, the first 500 of my subscribers to use the link in the description will get a two month free trial. So you will get two free months of Skillshare. And this only goes to the first 500 people. So if you're interested, go to the description box right now and click the Skillshare link because I guarantee that these seats are gonna fill up really fast. Now with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and Grindelwald this photo. <laughs> So basically the first thing we're, that we're gonna wanna do is change the eye color here. So if we zoom in, you're gonna wanna get pretty close to your eye, about like this. You could even get a little closer if you want, as close as you really need to get. And then we're gonna go over here and select the uh, elliptical marquee tool. And then you're gonna just have your uh, cursor somewhere right around the center of your iris. And then you're going to hold Shift Alt you're gonna click and drag, and holding Shift and Alt is going to scale this as a perfect circle rather than, you know, if you weren't holding Shift or Alt, you're just gonna be able to select like, uh, like an oval or something, but we want a perfect circle. So hold Shift and Alt, drag it up to about right there. You wanna select your entire iris, and then you can see we do have a little bit of the uh, eyelid selected right here. And we're going to deselect that by selecting the magn or I'm sorry, the po polygonal lasso tool over here. And then you're going to hold Alt. And when you hold Alt, you can see a little minus symbol appears next to your cursor. That means you are subtracting this from your selection. And there's not much to subtract, but there we go. Now we have the perfect amount uh, selected. We're going to hold Control and click C, and then Control V. And what we did was we pasted just the iris into this uh, second layer here above the background. So if we hide the background, all you see is the iris. So that is control C, which is copy, and control V, which is paste. And you really need to learn these keyboard shortcuts because they are going to speed up your process very significantly. Now the next thing we wanna do is change the color of this, um, of this eye. So from here, we're going to go to uh, image adjustments and we're gonna do hue slash saturation and then colorize. You wanna check this colorize box over here. And as you can see, it turned kind of like a reddish brown. Um, I can bring the saturation up so you can see it. It's very red if I do that. Let's try and get a nice blue color. Like a pale blue is what we're looking for. You can bring the lightness up to make it more pale. You can bring the saturation down. If you take it all the way down, it goes black and white. So let's just bring it up so that we can see some of the color, but it's not, it's not like crazy like that. So we're gonna put it about in the center and then we can bring the lightness up a little bit more. 
and that should be good right there. I know it doesn't look great yet, but don't worry, we're, we're not done. So now we're going to want to go to the blending mode right here. Right now it's at normal. We're gonna bring it down, let's try screen. That looks pretty good, the screen looks pretty good. And uh, another option would be uh, linear dodge, which also looks pretty good. I might keep linear dodge in there or a lighter color. Now let's do linear dodge. I think that looks probably the best out of them all. And then the next thing we wanna do is add a layer mask. And using this layer mask, we're gonna make this look a lot better. Cause as you can see right now, it doesn't look that great. It doesn't look very realistic. So we wanna make this look realistic. And to do that, like I said, we're going to select the layer that has the uh, colored iris. And then we're going to uh, create a layer mask on that. And with the layer mask selected, we, we're gonna use the brush tool over here. So for the settings, let's take the hardness up all the way. And then let's uh, go ahead and you wanna have black selected over here as your primary color. And then you also wanna have the layer mask selected over here. Um, and you don't wanna select the layer icon. You want what's next to that um, right next, right to the right of the chain link, and that is going to be your layer mask. So now we can, there we go. Now we have an iris in there. Let's back up a little bit and see what this looks like. Okay, so that's, so for now that's what it looks like. The color I think is a little bit too blue, but we can fix that in just a minute. Now we wanna take uh, the hardness down Let's take it all the way down to zero. And then I'm just gonna sort of color right along this edge so that it's not so sharp. It kind of fades into the uh, darker part around the iris. And there we go. As I said, that blue looks just a little too um, intense. Okay, so now we'll select the layer and we're gonna do adjustments and we're gonna do hue and saturation again. And I'm gonna bring the saturation down and the lightness up a bit. Cause it was just a bit too blue. Right about there looks good. So now if we zoom in, it looks a little more realistic. It's not quite as blue. I think that looks good for Grindelwald's eye. Next, we're going to add the mustache. And I actually <laughs> created a mustache based on screenshots of Grindelwald. And I'm going to include this as a download if you wanna download this mustache. We're gonna pull it in to our file. And when you pull it in, you're gonna be able to scale it. If you hold shift while you're scaling from one of the corners, it will maintain its aspect ratio, which means um, it's not gonna be warped. You're not gonna be able to squish it or anything. It's going to stay right at the right size. And this is obviously too big. So <laughs> let's go ahead and scale this mustache down to about the right size. Um, we're going to kind of tilt it a little bit, make sure it looks right. I think that looks good. So yeah, we just hit enter and that will finalize our uh, transform of the mustache. So, so far, this is what we have, a mustache and a, a bluish white eye. And what we wanna do next here is make your skin a little bit paler. And to do this, let's go back to the background layer, which is the layer which has your, um, uh, your face on it. And right above this background layer, we're going to create a new adjustment layer. And this adjustment layer should be hue and saturation. Now let's take the saturation of this whole layer down a bit. And as you do this, you can see, it makes you look like you're getting a bit paler. We can bring the brightness up a little if you wanna be a little more pale. If you bring it all the way down, it's gonna be black and white, but we do want a little bit of color, just not quite as much. This is a bit too much. So let's bring the paleness down to about right here. And that looks good. And then on top of that, it looks like we may need to adjust um, the contrast because now that we've done that the contrast is not as good it's you know a little too light 
we want darker blacks in here. So let's do another adjustment layer and we're going to do brightness slash contrast. And we're just gonna pull the contrast arrow up to about right there. I think that looks good. And now we can hide that one for now. We're gonna come back to this uh, uh, brightness and contrast adjustment. But let's just hide it for now. And we're gonna be working with the hue and saturation layer that we created. So select the layer mask right here. And then with black selected, we're gonna select the paint bucket tool and fill in the entire layer mask. And that will basically pretty much hide the entire thing here. Um, now with the layer mask selected, that we just colored in, switch your color to white, select the brush tool. We can have it a bit bigger, maybe about like this. Um, and then you're going to start coloring. And as you can see, that is making your skin look paler because we are showing, we've hidden basically the entire layer with by coloring it in black in the layer mask. And now we are showing just the parts we want to by coloring them in white. And I'll show you what I mean in just a minute. And there we go. I think the skin looks uh, pretty sickly in that one. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna make my brush just a little bit bigger and I'm gonna change the opacity to about 50% and then I'm gonna switch my color back to black and then I'm going to just put a couple of little marks here by my eyes just to get that sort of darkness around the eyes. And there, look, I look pretty sickly now. So let me show you what I mean about the layer mask. If I alt and click on this layer mask, there we go. All of this is, everything that's black is hidden. And if it's sort of a gray, then it's sort of semi-transparent, not completely hidden. And white is what is showing on this layer now. So that's how we got that to work. Now let's go back and show the brightness and contrast layer, which makes it look quite a bit better. So if we compare that to the original, there's the original and there is our adjustments. I think it looks pretty good so far as is. And the last thing we want to do is adjust the colors because right now there's a lot of uh, reds and yellows in here, which is making it look pretty bright and happy. And we want this to look a little more uh, cold and not so happy. So let's do a layer adjustment layer again, and we're going to go to color balance. And you'll start off with your midtones and you want to drag the uh, cyan and red, you want to drag the arrow closer to the cyan. And you want to do the same thing over here with yellow and blue. You want to drag the arrow closer to the blue. And then you can select shadows and do something similar. You don't want to go too far, like that's way too far. What we want to do is just a very subtle color difference. And then we'll go back to, we'll go to the highlights and actually the highlights could probably be a little red and yellow, a little more red and yellow. There we go. So again, the shadows should look like this. The midtones should be a little bit um, more of a drastic difference here. And then the highlights are going to be the other direction with a little more red and a little more yellow. And so if we hide that, you can see it's become just a little more blue and it doesn't look quite as warm. And that is it. That's how you Grindelwald yourself. So I would really like to see what you guys uh, can do with Grindelwalding yourself. So if you do make a Grindelwald version of yourself, go ahead and post that photo on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram and tag me in it so that I can see it because I would really love to see what you guys think and, and how you did in Photoshop. And yeah, that is it. So thank you so much for watching this video and I hope that these Photoshop tips help you not only Grindelwald yourself but also um, whatever else you wanna do in Photoshop. I hope that some of these uh, little tips and tricks and, and skills have, have helped you along in your learning of Photoshop.
Remember, I get a lot of ideas for these DIYs that I do from your comments. So if you have an idea for something that you want to see me do in the future, definitely leave a comment below and let me know. If you're interested in seeing more DIY videos having to do with Harry Potter and more, go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. All right, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.